Bill, one of the first things we'd like to ask you today, um, I know your background when you went to school was in political science. So how was it that you came to do news reporting? You're kidding. No, <laughs> I'm not. It's a long story. Uh, when I was, I graduated high school early. I was just turned 17 and I thought I knew everything. And I was supposed to go to Cornell, but I didn't want my parents to mortgage the house to go. So at the time there was a draft. So I went to the Air Force for four years, and after one day I realized what a mistake I made, but it turned out to be okay. I thought I knew everything, and in that, that, that one 24-hour period I learned I knew nothing. So I started going to school, and when I finally got out, I was assured in my own mind that I was a captain of industry. So I lived uh, in Overbrook, and I was driving down City Line. The first big building I saw was Channel 6. So I was on, going my way downtown to go to like PSFS with the big buildings. And went to Channel 6, filled out the forms, backdoor guard said to me, oh, by the way, what college did you graduate from? I said, well, I was in the Air Force for four years, and I was I have two years of college, and I'm still going to college. He said, let me have that application. He takes it back, and he says, you come back when, you're, when you have a degree. So I had a parking space. So I crossed the street to Channel 10, did the exact same thing. The guard says, what college did you graduate from? I said, LaSalle. He said, well, go upstairs to personnel. So I first person I met was my wife. I was astounded. It was a great place to, all the women seemed to be, women came out of magazines, they were bright, really bright, beautiful, it was wonderful. Went to personnel, took these tests, went in there to the personnel director, her name was Zara Bishop. She said, I'm looking at your resume and there's something wrong here. It does not say where you graduated college. And I said, Mrs. Bishop, the reason it says that is because I had to lie to you. I had to do you a favor. She went, she's back in the chair, she says, favor? I said, yes, because if I didn't lie, you wouldn't have the opportunity to hire me, and that would be the biggest mistake you made today. She started laughing. She said, you're unbelievable. You really mean that? I said, absolutely, I mean it. So she said, uh, we have a job in, in a newsroom. I've never even seen a newsroom. And it's a management trainee job. I said, I'll take it. I've never been unemployed, I'll take it immediately. So he said, yeah, come in at 5 o'clock on Monday. Went in the newsroom, 5 o'clock. No one talked to me for four hours. And finally, a guy came in whistling like this. <laughs> goofy guy, big goofy guy. And he says to me, are you Baldini? I said, yeah. He says, oh, you're a new copy boy. I said, no, no, I'm not. I'm a new management trainee. He says, no, you're a new copy boy. I said, no, no. Now, you have to imagine, for four years of telling me I'm no longer a boy, and the first thing I hear is you're a boy. I'm really annoyed. I said, no. He said, you better come into my office. I went to his office, found out that she, I snowed her, and she snowed me. So this job was uh, being copy boy. There were three of us. And the job was midnight to eight, eight to four, or four, four to midnight. And there were only three of us. One guy was uh, just graduated Harvard, was going to Harvard, getting a master's. The other guy was a senior in, at Yale and me. And the deal was, Within a year, within a year, one of us would be a writer. So I accepted this challenge, and I remember this guy, the news director, says to me, well, what do you think? I said, I'm going to win hands down. And he said, why? And I said, because they're boys and I'm a man. <laughs> I was crazy. <laughs> and I, I, I knew I, knew I was just would never give in. So, and after a year, I got the job, and that's how I started. So I was no longer a captain of industry. And uh, he said, the day you quit school is the day uh, you're fired. So I did. naturally, I finished. Got a scholarship to St. Joe, went to finish St. Joe in political science. Crazy story, huh? Great story. And everybody I worked with, everybody was one of these uh, guys or women who, who dreamed about being in, in TV. They, I mean, they started when they're little kids, you know, with Edward R. Murrow and... Me, I had no interest at all in the news <laughs> until I got there, and then it became this challenge. Here I am. And here you were, and you've started this. You've had no interest in the news, no background in the news. No. And yet you have this incredible opportunity. Yeah, I got this opportunity, and, and the more I was there, the more I liked it. And I changed my, I, had, I, I was an industrial and public relations major, then I changed to history, then I changed to philosophy, and then I got my degree in political science. So I, you know, the more I was involved in the news, the more of a challenge it was, you know, writing and 
learning how to produce. Back in those days, you, you had to go through all the different levels. You had to be a writer, you had to be a producer, then you had to, uh, you had to actually do shows, be the executive producer, and only then did you become a, rec become a reporter. Now they kind of christen you, like knighthood. But then you had to earn it. It was really an interesting way to, to you had to be on the assignment desk for at least a year. So by the time you were out on the street, you had a fairly good knowledge of how things worked. So is that how you heard about Penhurst, Bill? I found out about Penhurst through an accident. It was probably the most fortunate accident of my life. I was working on a Sunday, I had nothing to do. The Marriott was across the street and they used to have conferences all the time. So I said to the assignment editor, I'm gonna go across the street, see what's going on. I ran into this group, Mainline Chamber of Commerce. They were having a meeting about this place called Penhurst. I never heard of it, didn't know where it was. I said, what's this place Penhurst like? And they start telling me the story and I sat there and I said, I'll never forget. I said, if 10% of what you're telling me is true, I'll do a story on it. I said, how did you get in? They said, well, because we, we volunteer. I said, well, I can't be a fraud. How about swearing me in as a member of the Mainline Chamber of Commerce and I'll go with you next Sunday. So I did. No cameras, no nothing. And it was more than I ever dreamed. I mean, I was, I was in shock. Everything they said was true, plus. So I came back and I told my boss, and he had the same reaction I had. He didn't believe me because I'm this young reporter. I haven't done anything. <clears throat> so, yeah, I, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Jeez. Uh, so I finally convinced him that I should go back with a camera. And he said, how are you going to get in? And I said, well, I'll leave that to me. So I went back and I went to the, the person who was running it, the superintendent, Leon Petkonsky, and frankly told him I saw everything, that if he does not let me in with my camera, I'm going to stand outside the gates every day and explain to people what was inside. I said, it's not going to look good for you. But if you let me in, I'll try to help you out because you need a lot of help here. So he said, well, you're blackmailing me. I said, you can call out anything you want. I'm just telling you the truth. And so he let me in. I was stunned. And uh, that's when it got started. Bill, had you ever met a person with a disability before your involvement? Yes, I, I've, I, I met them, but I, you know, I, I don't know how to explain it. I, my, my father was one of those people who, who always said, you know, you, you never made fun of anyone who wasn't exactly like you, and he had a great empathy for anybody that, that was shortchanged by nature for any reason, and it kind of impressed me. So, you know, I always had this sympathy for anybody who, you know, through no fault of their own, had a problem. But I never saw anything like I saw it there. Never. Just, I was stunned.